So far, I have done two videos for my series on the Berserk manga. The first analyzed the manga's roots in psychoanalysis, and the second analyzed its roots in alchemy and the occult. My third video was originally going to be on the manga's links to Hinduism and Norse mythology. However, something completely random happened to me about a week ago that put that idea on hold. One that led me to a treasure trove of discoveries. Let me set this up for you. If you've watched my videos on the Silent Hill games, you'll probably recall me referencing the work of a fellow YouTuber named Reinstall Paul. He recently finished work on two new series, analyzing the inspirations behind Silent Hill. One series focuses on Silent Hill 3 and is currently releasing in segments. Paul graciously gave me the opportunity to watch it in its entirety beforehand. While I was watching it, I noticed this screenshot where he was comparing two sigils from the game with sigils from books by a 19th century occultist named Eliphas Levy. The sigil in the bottom left immediately captured my attention, because most of the symbols and their placement were identical to the talisman painted on Guts's neck in the Berserk manga. If I could find out where this sigil came from, I could probably unlock the secrets of these symbols and their relevance to Berserk. So I immediately messaged Paul and asked him what book he found this sigil in. He told me he wasn't entirely sure, but he knew it was from Eliphas Levy. He told me to check his most famous text, Transcendental Magic. I was unable to find it there, but I had a lead. I prepared myself to go through several PDFs of Levy's work in order to find the origin of this sigil. Thankfully, I didn't have to do that because the sigil was in the second PDF I opened. It was in Levy's book, The History of Magic, on page 298. The description for this sigil and the one above it is as follows. Quote, the first, the top one, represents the great work. The second is that of black magic. Both are from the Grimoire of Honorius. So of course, I do a Google search for the Grimoire of Honorius, and what do I find? Books featuring the very same sigil on its cover. Now I just had to figure out what the sigil meant. I turned back to A History of Magic to find Eliphas Levy's description of the sigil and its origins with the supposed Honorius. Supposedly, the Honorius in question was Pope Honorius III. At least, that's who the grimoire was attributed to. This was weird because, well, since when did Catholic popes validate and engage with black magic? That's what the grimoire of Honorius does, by the way. It's not a refutation of black magic. It's an embrace. But according to Levy, and the man who translated his work, Arthur E. Waite, this was most likely a malicious misattribution. Pope Honorius III lived in the 12th and 13th centuries, while the first edition of the Grimoire is said to have appeared in 1629, in the 17th century. So why attribute this Grimoire to a pope who lived roughly 400 years prior? In the mind of Waite and Levy, this was to make it seem like the Catholic Church secretly approved of necromancy and sorcery, in the hopes of either legitimizing black magic and or degrading the authority of the Catholic Church. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the explanation for this sigil and its relevance to Berserk. According to Levy, this sigil's purpose reflects the entire purpose of the grimoire. It is the same as that of Simon, and the majority of the Gnostics. It is the substitution of the passive for the active principle. A pantacle, which forms a frontispiece to the work, gives expression to this doctrine, being passion as predominant over reason, sensualism deified, and the woman in priority to the man. A tendency which recurs in all anti-Christian mystic systems. He goes on to explain the individual symbols, but before I give that explanation, I'll clarify what Levy just said. This sigil, this pantacle as Levy calls it, represents the very ethic of black magic. It represents an antagonism towards the powers of the world and Christianity. Where the world and Christianity are ruled by the principles of patriarchal rule and reason, this sigil, and black magic more broadly, represent the opposites, the reverse of those principles. For instance, the moon in the center of this sigil is apparently the moon of the Egyptian goddess known as Isis. That's the feminine principle going against the predominant masculine principle of the world and Christianity. 
While the triangle that the moon resides in is surrounded by a crux and sada with double crossbar. In case you don't know what a crux and sada is, it's just another term for an Egyptian ankh. It is inscribed within a circle, and within the space formed by the three segments of the circle, there is on one side the sign of the spirit and the Kabbalistic seal of Solomon. On the others, the magic knife and the initial letter of the binary. Below a reversed cross forming the figure of the lingam and the name of God, L, also reversed. So the easiest thing to comment on is the reversal or changing of certain symbols. Reversing the name of God is like reversing the symbol of the cross to mean antichrist. To reverse a Judeo-Christian symbol means to work against the prevailing power of the Judeo-Christian God. In Berserk, a god equivalent to the function of the Judeo-Christian god exists. Whether or not its form is the idea of evil from chapter 83 is canonically uncertain. But we do know that this god nonetheless exists, and that the god hand serve it. Having the name of God reversed on Guts's neck not only symbolizes working against the god of the god hand, it works against the effects of the brand of sacrifice which the god hand gave to Guts. This is likely why Shierka painted it in the protective talisman in the first place. Referring to the bottom right symbol as a lingam makes sense. In case you don't know, a lingam represents the Hindu god Shiva, also known as the deity of death and time, and the destroyer. To repeat what I said at the beginning of this video, Berserk was inspired by Hindu concepts, literally using the name of the god Shiva in chapter 297. In this case, I imagine that invoking Shiva via the lingam, be it with Guts's sigil or Honorius's sigil, would indicate a desire to destroy the power of the prevailing god. Then there's the double-crossed Ankh. If Levi is correct, then this would mean that I got something wrong in my most recent Berserk video. In that video, I said that this was the alchemical symbol for amalgamation, just upside down. I figured because it stood opposite the alchemical symbol for Mercury that it was safe to assume this. But let's assume that I'm wrong and Levy is right. What does a double-crossed Ankh mean? Well, unfortunately, I was unable to come across any definitive explanation. I suppose if we go with the theme of reversal or perversion of existing symbols, adding an extra cross to the normally unicrossed Ankh makes sense. However, this is where I start to question Levy's assertions. And it's not because my perspective on this particular symbol is challenged, by the way. Let me explain. First of all, an Ankh normally has a circle at the top of it, but various versions of this symbol, as painted by Honorius, show a half circle. Going beyond that, Levy's assertions about the other symbols don't seem to be grounded in much. He calls this symbol the sign of the spirit, but he doesn't elaborate on the origin of this symbol and which spirit it is a sign of. Same for this letter being the initial letter of the binary. What binary? He doesn't say. Why is this a magic knife? He doesn't explain that either. I wonder if it even is a knife. In regards to Berserk, an even better question is why Kentaro Miura changed the symbol from that of the letter B and a knife to something that looks more like a hammer and chisel from Freemason symbolism. Unfortunately, the grimoire of Honorius itself does not give any explanation for these symbols, at least none that I could glean. If you know the specific meaning behind these extra symbols, along with these letters here which I still do not understand, please feel free to email me at the address you see on screen. At this present moment, all I can say is that these symbols originate from the grimoire, and their purpose is to go against the prevailing religion at that time, which was Christianity. I suppose Kentaro Miura used them because Shierka is a witch, and her interests, along with the interests of Guts and his gang, go against the prevailing religions in the Berserk universe. The other thing I can say for certain is that Miura learned about these symbols from Levi, as we find another set of symbols from Levi's work on this talisman. In Levi's book Transcendental Magic, these four symbols are found on the Pantacle of Pythagoras, on page 166. From what I understand, this pantacle was not actually drawn by the ancient Greek mathematician, but it does represent his personal philosophy, which was rooted in both magic and mathematics. 
To explain what that philosophy is, I need to quickly identify the pantacle on the right. This is the pantacle of Ezekiel, which is a smaller representation of the four faces of God from Ezekiel's vision, those being the faces of an eagle, ox, lion, and human. Levy put them side by side here because they supposedly represent the same thing. It's almost exactly as I said it in the last video. They represent the union of opposites. Quote, to equilibrate forces, they must be simultaneously maintained and made to act alternately. The same arcanum is typified by the dual cross in the Pantacles of Pythagoras and Ezekiel, where the crosses equilibrate each other and the planetary signs are always in opposition. In the case of Pythagoras's Pantacle, the planetary signs that are in opposition are the sun and the moon. Though they are opposite, they are unified inside the pantacle. This extends to the two stars as well. The six-pointed star, which Levy identified as the Seal of Solomon, represents the macrocosm, the infinite, and the absolute, aka God. It is contrasted by the five-pointed star, which Levy identifies with the microcosm. Macrocosm and microcosm refer to the hermetic principle of as above, so below. That which is below is made in the image of that which is above. These symbols indicate God. But that's not all I wanted to bring to your attention today. In my last video, I asked all of you for help regarding another symbol from the manga, that being the talisman of Shierka's master, Flora. I received a few interesting messages from you guys. The first came from a gentleman named Walter. He said, that the basic design of Flora's talisman comes from a grimoire called the Greater Key of Solomon. This grimoire is a compilation of Solomonic magic taken from manuscripts which originated from the 15th to the 17th century. In this grimoire we find the following symbol, which Walter calls the Circle of Art. According to him, the Circle of Art is a classic design, used to establish a ritual space protected emblematically by names of God amidst the balanced four elements. This would make perfect sense given what I elucidated in the last video. Shierka invokes the four elements and the four names of God multiple times in the manga. For her master, Flora, to do the same, shows a remarkable amount of subtextual consistency from Kentaro Miura. Aside from that, I didn't get much clarity regarding the rest of the talisman, save for one thing. The letters in these six triangles are the first six letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Special thanks to Adam and another anonymous viewer for pointing this out to me. As for why Miura chose these letters, there are two possibilities. One, he put them there because they look cool. That is a strong possibility, because other than the second possibility, I don't see any reason to just randomly use the first six letters. As for that second possibility, I refer to what Adam told me. There is this concept known as gematria, where a numerical value is assigned to a letter or a word. For instance, the first six letters of the Hebrew alphabet are assigned the numerical values of one through six. The practice of gematria is still used widely in Jewish circles. The core belief surrounding Jewish gematria is that the Hebrew letters, along with their numerical values, contain a hidden message from God. By giving numerical value to letters and words, and cross-referencing patterns, that message can, hopefully, be uncovered. In respect to the first six letters in the Hebrew alphabet, these add up to the number 21. If Kentaro Miura used these first six letters with Gematria in mind, then there are two possible meanings behind the number 21. One of the names of God in Hebrew is Eheye, whose numerical value is also 21. If you watched my last Berserk video, this should be very familiar. Shierka literally invokes the name Eheye in chapter 198 of the manga, along with three other names of God. See the last video for all the evidence surrounding this claim. The second possibility is that the number 21 refers to the final card in the Tarot Major Arcana. In case you don't know, there is a set of 22 tarot cards in the Major Arcana, each of which correspond to the 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The 21st is the final card because tarot counts from 0 to 21. 
not from 1 to 22. The 21st card is the World card, and it represents the end of life's journey, the reunion with God. Now what do you see in the corners of the card? The four faces of God from Ezekiel's vision. So, was this all intentional? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Please hit the like button if you like this video. It's free, easy to do, and helps me out a lot. If you want to support this level of in-depth analysis into popular franchises, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description box below. Until next time, just remember, as always and as per usual, stay yellow.